Welcome to another segment of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. My name is Rick George, and today we're filming number three in a series of resiliency videos. This video that we're going to show you today has to do with manipulating the wheel on an air bottle to extend your low air. There are certain times where that's going to occur in their emergency situations. All of them are Mayday situations. Lost, disoriented, trapped, running out of air. This is what this technique is for. We're going to take it in a step further. We're going to show you in a pseudo search mode, okay, to set up the scenario. Relatively re realistic, not completely realistic, but it's just to show you the techniques. So in this shot, we're going to demonstrate doing a search very quickly. It's the vehicle that we're going to be able to use in this video to show why we're using this wheel technique. You notice that the door was left chalked open. It's so that we can have ambient light to be able to show on the video. Ordinarily, you can go ahead and close it for the flow path purposes. So our firemen find themselves on low air. They're coming in to find an area of safe refuge. They close the door behind them or call the mayday. For the purposes of this video, what we're showing you is the technique. They would have called the mayday, and they would have used their lunar or whatever it is that your department would offer for an emergency and a writ deployment. What they're doing is they're taking their packs and putting it in an area of a position of comfort. They're gonna control the pass alarms so that as the pass alarms start to activate, they can also shut them off. But what they're gonna do is they're gonna use the breathing techniques that they learned in an earlier video to be able to show, to utilize while they're manipulating the wheel on the pack. What, the whole idea of this is to be able to control their breathing and shut off the vibro alert in this case, which is the low air alarm. Some have bells, some have whistles. This technique translates over to the same way. There is a sweet spot as you're breathing where you can crack the bottle and start to breathe without activating the low air alarm. So now you're robbing the pneumatic low air alarm of its air to be able to be able to use while you breathe. Combined with the breathing techniques, it'll extend your air from an average in my department we found 6 to 12 minutes is the average on just trying to self-extricate for a low air and these are the quarter bottles um, and what we're seeing is consistent numbers in 45 to 55 minutes in excess of 62 minutes at one time. Um, so typically the first time they get it is about 20 minutes but um, listen you can't argue with success. We've done this hundreds of times and it's translating into being able to extend your air. Anyone can do this under these circumstances. We're merely showing the technique. For this to be a viable technique, you have to become good at doing it under pressure. Mastery is only attained through increasing the degree of difficulty until you can achieve your goal under the most chaotic of circumstances. You'll notice that the low air alarm is not being activated either. That's because the manipulation of the wheel, they found that sweet spot where they're robbing the air from the pneumatic low air alarm and they're using it for breathing. When they combine this with the breathing technique, it increases your profile of survivability. Also, the pass alarms are being reset. Now, this is going to sound like a foreign concept, but the ability to be able to reset your pass alarms and allows you to communicate and not have the irritant of the pass alarm going off. Radio comms are very important, especially in a mayday situation. However, if you don't have a radio, we recommend that you allow the pass alarm to flow freely. So, in this video, we've shown how to combine two techniques. One is the breathing techniques that we showed in video number two, and then uh, manipulating the air pack in video, this video number three. Um, this is video number three in the series of six resiliency techniques. So what this does is showing you how to use your breathing technique combined with manipulating the wheel or the handle on the bottle of an air pack that allows the air to come in and out. By manipulating that and opening it slowly and closing it slowly, combining and timing it with your breathing, there's a sweet spot there that robs it from the pneumatic low air alarm and allows you to use that for breathing. So the way that we practiced for that was on full bottles. So when you activate your pack in the morning and you're checking it, um, it everything lights up, right? But if you crack it slowly while you're breathing and then shut it off, at the middle of your, at the end, towards the end of your inhale, 
And then as you're exhaling it, you're getting towards the end of your exhale, you open it. There's a sweet spot in there. You'll be able to suck the air right out of the bottle without activating the low air alarm. So we practiced on the full bottles and then we graduated to getting onto a treadmill. We had to do some kind of a test, right? So rather than hire a university, which is really costly, we Rick George'd it. We got a treadmill, we jacked the incline all the way up, we got the speed up to 3.0, so consistently across the board. Short-legged, long-legged, short, tall, didn't matter. The test was the same for everybody. And when they hit low air, we slowed the speed down, but we kept the incline up. So we cut the speed in half, and they continued. And that's where we got the numbers of six to 12 minutes on low air. The second drill, we did the exact same thing, except when they hit vibro alert, instead of slowing it down, we had them get off the treadmill. They called a mayday, a lunar. They did the entire thing, whatever your department does, they went and they sat in position of comfort. They caught their breath using the breathing technique. And then they began, once they were comfortable, they began manipulating the bottle. Now there's a level of anxiety because you wanna become good at this. Typically, the first time people do this, it's about 20 minutes. They get 20 minutes, from six to 12 minutes to 20 minutes. But after they get good at it and they find the technique, we are consistently hitting numbers between 40 to 55 minutes. You can't argue with successes like that. Something is working there. Um, we would strongly encourage you to try it, do it for your department, try it on your own. Um, but keep in mind, like we mentioned earlier, this is all about increasing the degree of difficulty. So you have to increase the stress that comes with that. Otherwise, your ceiling is very low. And when the time comes, because this is a technique for survivability, this isn't a technique for anything other than sheltering in place and creating, it's a mayday situation like we talked about earlier. So uh, that being said, go ahead and give it a shot, practice it. I'm sure you're gonna get the exact same results that we have. We, we do that whenever we travel and teach anywhere. Uh, my name is Rick George. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us for another segment of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. Stay frosty.